You look like my dear. Hey, green giant. Maybe your mother licked the pots while she was pregnant with you. That is why you have a green face. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Busala Amuda and thank you so much for tuning in today. So as you can see, the today's mood and atmosphere is kind of different because um, I'm going to be doing a review, just as the topic already says, about the documentary skin that Beverly Naya did. And it's something I fell in love with. I watched it yesterday and I couldn't resist the urge to make this video. Now, the documentary just basically explains the struggle that black women go through with their skin, how we just feel insecure, and just because we've been told fairer or light skin is better, being light skin is the ideal, you know, skin type, it's more attractive, it's more um, profitable for people that are into the, I think maybe the entertainment business, because they see it as, it, act it just still go back to attraction, it attracts people, there's just something about being light skin that makes you feel special. So we black people feel that, okay, if you can't beat them, you join them. So we try to bleach. We just try to, you know, get rid of our skin. And the documentary was actually a very big high hope. And it's something I would say everybody actually needs to watch. Beverly Naya did a fantastic job on that documentary. Because apart from her sharing her own experience about how she was bullied, and how she um, she also felt a type of way, and because she also has a big support system, who was her mom, who despite everything just tells her, oh, you're beautiful, you are, you know, you're just everything, and you are more than I could ever ask for. God will not give me a child that is not good enough. Do you get? So her having that kind of support helped her, I believe. Then there is Echo. I don't really know how to pronounce her name, so let's go to insert a picture before. I bag on her name. Also spoke about her own challenges, despite the fact that she's a little bit light-skinned. And I know a couple of people have come that, oh, she can't really relate because she's light-skinned. And then we're here talking about the struggles that black women have gone through. But I wouldn't really say she can't because it's just about, like, just saying... Just because she's lighter or just because she has a very and uh, hair, that doesn't mean she doesn't she doesn't also have like struggles or things she goes through. So I don't think that she also make us um that was the word now insensitive towards our own feelings and own challenges. Then there is um Diana Yakini. Oh god. A black skin is shiny. Like a a, a, a <laughs> Her skin is, is gorgeous. So she also explained, you know, how, what she went through in the entertainment industry about someone telling her that by 2018 or something, if you're not light-skinned, I, I bet you you won't get a job. I mean, how do you even say that to someone? Then, then there's just, I don't want to give, like, even a brief or the whole summary of the documentary defeats the purpose of the documentary. I just think you guys should watch it. But the way or the reason why I could relate to the documentary really was that, you know, it's it's being insecure in your own skin and not being comfortable or not feel or feel like you are not you are not acceptable just feeling like you have to do something to fit into a specific circle of people just because society or people have said okay this is the standard and this is what has to be done so you feel insecure in your own skin i think i was i tried to bleach once i think i was in gs1 or gs2 and it was a very stupid Decisions. All my friends then were like most, well, ninety percent of my friends they were light skin, so they got the attention. Then people came to them. They had like guys and you know just generally people that found them attractive. And I was just like the key to my friends. I would say the dove. I was the designated ugly green face. The dove, if that if that makes sense. So just like the anchor for them to meet my friends. And I just didn't feel good enough. I just. I was tired of just being on the sideline. I wanted to feel good. I, want, I felt like, okay, I need to change my skin. I need to be part of them. I just need to do something about my skin. Just They need to see me too. I'm a human. So the stupid me, I saved my allowance for days, God. I saved it for for weeks, even even up to a month. Then later home, when I, I went to get this cream. Is it Carotone or Caro White? I can't really remember. Those cream that has like orange cover. I was so excited. I was like, yes! I feel good. I'm almost on my way there. I'm about to, you know, also make a big change in my life. Yes, people are just going to notice me. I'm going to command people. You know, I can remember how excited I was. Immediately I got home. I went to have my bath. I showered. I used cream. Like I think I used more than fifty percent of that cream that day, just because I was so excited. I wanted this skin gone. Like I want to be light skinned. I wanted to be noticed. So it was just so. <laughs> Then after, I woke up the second morning and I could see like stretch mark. That was the first time I used it. 
and my skin is very sensitive if i use something like i like i will see it immediately but then just because I, my, my mentality i was like no dark is not good maybe this is what needs to happen for me to get rid of the skin i need to be lighter i have to be lighter then i use it also i went to school then i came back from school i just started having itches all over then ah, other spaces was red like you could definitely see definitely lighter and then my sister walking and then she saw me she was almost scared she would tell me i got molested or something then i, I just had to open it up to her like, okay this is what she was happening and then my sister busted out into tears and then she was like i am sorry i feel like i failed you and i was like i don't understand she was like i don't know why you feel like you need to change your skin to fit in i don't know why you feel you need to bleach to to have people accept you i don't know she just felt like it was a responsibility as my elder sister to guide me right and i I was going through this in my mind and she didn't know and i was also feeling guilty because i feel like regardless of what she would have told me then i would have still tried it out like i would have still done it because it's just like and then the, the stuff i was even facing in school was not even helping like it was just I feel at times the school that we expect to be like um, a safe place or a heaven for us at times seems to be the place where the attacks and all the all this insecurity came from. So I would just like after I saw it that day, I was like, okay, so what's the purpose of being light skinned and I still won't be able to show my body? Like, not like show my body, like what's the purpose of being like bleaching my skin and I still won't like it? Because the way I was saying it was really irritating me, so I stopped. Like, for a while, for like almost, because at that time, I think I was 11, 12, because I was still in GS1, GS2. So, for like almost eight years or seven years of my life, you would never catch me wearing short sleeve because so ashamed of it, because like it was showing all my body, and that made me stop. But then, that didn't even stop like the insecurities I faced. At times, people say and throw unnecessary jabs and just say things to people put it down or without even giving it a second thought i think i could remember i was in my ss1 when this english teacher she was a lady i could remember her face very well i could remember where i was sitting i could remember the class when this woman looked at me and then she was like oh you have because if, if you look here you still have a best marker then this woman looked at me and she was like oh what happened to your face i was like it's a best mark she was like how did you get it I was like my i was like my my mom has it so i got it from her and then she went like of all the things she could say she was like oh probably your mom was licked the pot while she was pregnant with you are you guys um she made a statement that sounded like um are you guys financially strapped or why would my mother be licking the pot like it was just saying that or oh, are you guys like abject poverty or something it it's me off the wrong way and then she was a new teacher so like you know just school's friends will laugh and then since then they'll call me oh, um green monster some will call me is this trick this giant green guy I've forgotten them and i actually don't want to remember at this moment and you know it just felt like a battle it just before oh god and then it made me build up a wall that if you come for me like <clears throat> at times it might just be banter it might just be my normal friend just trying to have a conversation with me just trying to talk to me and then just say one thing and i will go off like because it is something i am so insecure about it's something i have guarded so well so just seeing somebody trying to use it as a joke puts me in a foul mood for this and gets on my bloody nerves so even when at times my friends joke about it, especially people that i feel like safe or comfortable around but i'll just be a random person coming up to me and they might not even mean it that way but it made me so unheard that just one thing from someone and i, I will return with like four things so it made me see me as like I, I i decided to stop being the victim or being the bully or being bullied and taught myself to being the bully not bully in the sense of i go out and then i just like try to throw jabs at people and try to make them feel secure no but it's like if you come for me if you say something about maybe something i don't feel good about about my skin and then like i it's just like i already have the answers in my head like i never look for it just say oh mr look at your face look at your leg and i will tell you like four things that will hurt you deeply more than you hurt me so it was more as if I was hurting big people back. I was making them feel as bad as I was, and I was as I was, or as how it would have made me feel. So it was just like I was driving joy from other people's pain. 
And I had just had to tell myself that Bisela, this is not you. This is not the kind of person you are. People will always make just like so people will call like still now people will see me I'm like, oh, what happens to your face? She has to make a funny joke about it. Did they use iron to press you there? Did you go to you know, just make like a couple of things. But now I am so much comfortable in that. There are times I would never go out without maybe rubbing foundation at this side. There are times I would look at my face and I would say, Oh, look at how beautiful this place is and just put this down and it's a whole it's another challenge and it makes me feel so sad and insecure in my own skin that uh, then lately the last one that happened to me recently was when well, recently this year around february when one of my colleagues where i work right now i could remember like the funniest i can remember what it was wearing i could remember everybody that was there i could remember where he was seated and then he just made the statement of oh you look like my dear <laughs> the normal mean I, like the way the way it came for me and then he said after, I, I already have like five different things I could have said to hurt him back but I was just like I just laughed I just told myself no sir not today like you are way better than this do not stoop so low so it's like you are way better than this you don't you don't need to go down this and you don't need to you know do this or stuff like that so I tried to caution myself and then they all just laughed they all so could make random comments that oh you know my dear has like different characters so which one like she, <laughs> she like they're different character that Tyler, um was it was the guy's name i've forgotten his name is it tyler perry that he plays like oh is he which one of them and he just don't turn into like a big joke and i just joke about it. you know mommy i've like, probably gone to one of my friends my friend in the office and i like, ranted to her and i should have like, probably like what kind of nonsense but i just took it i'm like you know what if you think i look like my dear to you okay i look like my dear if to you you think i look like a green giant okay but your opinion of me or whatever conclusion or whatever job you think you can throw at me is not going to define how I see myself. It's not going to define who I am as a person. And it's definitely not going to define how I, I, I perceive or portray myself to people. It's not going to lower my self-esteem because I know my words and I know I'm, worth, I'm, more, I'm more than oh, the green face. I'm more than oh, the, uh, the my dear or whatever it is whatever you think you want to call me. So, and then another thing I could relate to was this, uh, I think it's Erica Fremantle. I'm sorry if I don't know how to pronounce her name very well. I'm just going to put a picture. She also shared her experience of how she married someone within six weeks. That she met in six weeks, like a complete stranger. She married a complete stranger and then they also divorced in six weeks. Like, just to show that because she saw someone that was like interested in her. So she was like, uh-uh, I have to get married. I have to, you know, take this opportunity. And at the end of the day, it wasn't something that was going to work out. Just that... Because she was so happy that, oh, someone accepted me, or oh, someone wants me, and then she rushed into the marriage, and then just as soon as she rushed in, she rushed that back. So it made me to realize that people are, oh, and she's one of, like, she's very successful today. And a couple of people that um, Beverly interviewed it, um, on the documentary also said they would like to go back to being um, dark skinned. Some said they are okay with it, but those that say, even they're like, the struggle because you need to maintain it like you can't even miss a day just like a routine just like it's as important as sleeping or as eating or as taking like the basic necessities so it's just like you go through like rubbing cream because it has to match like it just the skin just has to be completely intact you know it's just something it's just something that you have to do completely and above risky also gave his own experience and i like the fact that it was open that he just said okay this is what i did and this is what i did that he didn't lie he didn't try to portray anything out of the blue it's just like what just the documentary is just so beautiful and i would advise everybody to watch it and beverly daniel and everybody else that worked on the project is an excellent one and i really love it and i just hope there will be more of this you know showing lights uh, throwing light into just a couple of things that we face as black men so if you've not watched it watch it on netflix skin that's the name of the, the this thing is a documentary and thank you again beverly Naya, the old team netflix and everybody that went to do the production Guys. thank you and that's it on this episode i'm surprised i didn't cry i thought i was going to cry but your girl has grown anyway thank you so much for watching and do not forget really go and watch it on netflix please like really really watch it on netflix it's a very fantastic documentary and i feel it's a thing that if you it's not something they can tell you can, you know i want to tell you just something you need to experience yourself so yeah that's it for this episode thank you so much for watching if you're yet to subscribe please do not forget to subscribe share this video and i'll see you guys in my next video Bye.